Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So, you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. All right, go to town. Sheesh. Well, what are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about that cloth we found in the safe. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? <laughs> okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. Then once they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. All right, let's get this over with. No. How can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Uh, oh, um, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Psst! Hey, you! Over here! What's going on here? What are the kids' prints doing inside the Chief's safe? Don't ask me! Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now, that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Eek! Ch Chief Gant! Uh, we didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run right into a pole. Just then I thought of a certain detective. Do, do you mean me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. I, yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you in the coat? Me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, sir... Now get out. Y yes sir We'll be on our way, too, then. Wait, you, the one without the spiky hair? Don't go yet. M me sir? I'd like a word with you. But, sir, I I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair, you're free to go. Look, pal, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. It's hard to believe anyone could keep quiet about it all this time. Anyway, you listening to me? I'm going to try to smooth things over with the Chief again. Later, pal. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police want to ask her some questions, so she'll be busy for the rest of the day. I see. So the Chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I've finally figured it out. Who it is you're hiding behind those words? 
Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. I have to admit I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say? So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No. I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, whom, may I ask, is this person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly so frightened of? What is this person's name? Take that! Well, Ms. Skye? Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about the circumstances? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly investigated that evidence was... Me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other. Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. Take that! I just found this in a safe in the Chief's office. This jar piece and this strip of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me. Why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché, Mr. Wright. It's as you surmised. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders, even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. Trunk was broken. I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident? Serial killer Joe Dark's knife! I couldn't just leave that knife in him, so I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edgeworth's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And that is the reason for the bandage on your right hand? Yes, it seems that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. Ms. Starr. Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? 
It took a lot of work to finally close the dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that by whatever means possible. So you hid Dark's knife? The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it in Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right. Then I called my sister to tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma. I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so confident about Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling. The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust, or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean? Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Officer Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, you've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now, please. Don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murderer. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago?